on your behavior, it's on your heart, it's on your DNA. Like, how do you, how do you deal with all that? I know that you've seen this film, you're in this film. Does it inspire you each time or do you sit and you look at it and say, God, I thought they would have done something by this by now? <laughs> No, and it, it, it inspires me uh, profoundly, and I have to say that I'm incredibly uh, grateful uh, that Jamie called me and harassed me and uh, <laughs> uh, it included me in this amazing film. Um, and what I see is, I think for a lot of us, uh, change feels slow, um, and it's certainly not fast enough for me, and at the same time, when the Bayview Child Health Center opened 10 years ago now, in March of 2007, no one had ever heard of this. I would talk about adverse childhood experiences and toxic stress. No one knew what the heck I was talking about, right? And then I think it was right after we opened the Center for Youth Wellness, maybe uh, it was probably about three or four years ago, I had Superintendent Carranza talking about adverse childhood experiences, how they affect learning, and as part of the My Brother's Keeper effort here in San Francisco, talking about how we need to be addressing those issues. That happened in a very short period of time. And I definitely see this happening not only here, because I really feel like, for me, this movement, you know, this was the place that it grew out of, um, but I just can't, I, I, I went and uh, they had a Know Your Aces conference in Jamaica. They, I was just in Montenegro, Eastern Europe, which is right between Bosnia and Serbia. And they had a whole national conference on adverse childhood experiences. And it was the same thing. People there are just like, oh, bad things don't happen to children here, right? And meanwhile, they've been in conflict and war and, you know, all this kind of things for uh, a long period of time. And um, it's really amazing to see what is happening. We are raising awareness. And now we need to go from awareness to action. So we need to change our policies and practices. We need to begin screening every single child for adverse childhood experiences as part of their regular physical exam. We need to be coordinating services between the doctor's office the school system, our justice system, our early childhood system, all of our child serving systems that we have, we need to begin putting those policies and practices in place so that when our next generation of kids come through, they are having different experiences. And it comes from training every child serving practitioner. It comes from putting, looking within our own institutions it comes from talking to your neighbor, putting it on your Facebook. If you got a Twitter, you got Snapchat, whatever you got, put that information out there because when we know better, we can do better. We're gonna, we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna excuse her right now. And, and, and you two young people, just, I don't need a mic. You two young people, it's in your court now. You guys with the dreams haven't been stomped on yet. <laughs> so I want to talk both to you, Tiffany, and to you, Joy. We want you to take the last moments that we have for this panel. And remember, we can only take a few questions, so get them in right away. So who want to start? You want to start? You want to? Well, I can... Hello? Okay. Mm -hmm. I can say that um, we at Third Street have been providing mental health first aid trainings for several community-based organizations. And we've reached out to several schools to try to do this with their staff because we feel like, like Nadine was saying, if we start training the frontline people, then our kids won't have to go through what they go through at school, in the justice system. And so we are an open partner. Again, like Lauren was saying, it starts here tonight with us. It starts with this panel and we're a partner in this. Um. I think part of our work, it follows a model of um, Antonio Gramsci in, in looking at a war of position uh, to eventually lead to a war of maneuver. And uh, much of this, the, the, the data in the film 
and the reality that young people are suffering. You know, Tupac talked about it a while ago when he said thug life. He said the hate that you give little infants, everyone. It's an acronym. And so we know that. We know that that investment in, uh, investments in, in uh, the demise of young people, it, it, it ruins a nation. We know that. We also know that if these numbers were happening uh, in the marina, in the sunset, in Piedmont, that we would have moved to action a while ago. We know that there's a direct correlation between who it's happening to and, and skin tone and class. We know these things. Um, and so what is more interesting for us in our generation who are in the streets, who are putting our lives and our bodies on the line, is closing the know and do gap. We know this is harmful, and so we have to think about this relies upon a moral conscience, knowing these numbers, right? And, and I particularly work in schools that in schools, particularly in those spaces, to be successful, you have actually had to do away with a moral conscience. You have had to allow the harmful impacts of tracking and underachievement as a means for upward mobility. And we seek to disrupt those things. We're seeking to train up and love young people and provide hope for young people who will be courageous, who will sacrifice their bodies, their professions, um, their aspirations for those in their community, those that they love, those that they care about, and that they will develop what um, Bruce Perry gets at, what many practitioners are pushing for, which is empathy, our ability to love, our ability to respond to suffering. And so much of our pedagogy and much of our practices, both, as I said earlier, are seeking to address the causes of suffering, the causes of pain, but we're also seeking to love on young people in a way in which they seek to disrupt it. Last words, anybody, before I take a few questions here? Okay, if not, we'll close your head. What is being done to target upstream factors that predisposes communities to the ACEs problems? Anybody want to tackle that? Or have we answered it? I, <laughs> no? I can. I think I went ahead of myself, but part of what I was talking about with uh, Antonio Gramsci's model of a uh, war of position is we're seeking to, often we, we talk about dealing with trauma and, and academic achievement as a false binary and that we need to address one or the other. And what we know is when you love young people and you uh, love on young people, then uh, academic achievement follows closely. And in order to address these, I really appreciate that question on upstream factors because Sometimes when we talk about trauma, we center it around what's happening in homes and it becomes pathologized and we're talking about indiv individual behavior rather than structures that are causing bad health and bad health outcomes. And so through this war of position, we're seeking to create, again, to cultivate young people who will be in positions of power to make very important decisions that impact structures that deal with the ways in which structures produce um, inequitable health outcomes. Mm -hmm. Um, we're, most of the questions have been answered <laughs> as we've got, but there is one here that says, are there mi any Mrs. Kendra's programs uh, in the Bay Area, any Bay Area school that you can think of? And if not, have you advocated directly and bought your film to the doorsteps of school departments and said, go for it? Uh, so the post-traumatic stress clinic of New Haven, uh, Dr. Johnson's program, uh, when we were filming there, they were really focused on, on New Haven as the community of focus. Uh, they are preparing to take their program statewide in Connecticut. His goal is to go national. Uh, he struggles to raise money. Surprise, surprise. And, uh, you know, they, they're working on how to, to sort of export it in a way it's sort of like I think about, you know how In-N-Out burgers are so good, right? Mm -hmm. So it's because everything's kind of local and, you know, it doesn't get turned into a, a sort of a, a monotonous uh, sort of tool to distribute around the world and it loses everything unique about it. Dr. Johnson would say that, you know, the thing with Miss Kendra is that it takes, you know, you can, you, he could send around a kit to every school in the country 
but it's, it's so much more about the relationships and understanding the underlying uh, trauma-informed nature in which you interact with kids. It takes a lot more than a, than a Miss Kendra in a box. So although he's focused on doing that, you know, he's, he's still evolving and he, f he feels like it needs to grow in the right way.